Animal R&R &R is a two-part documentary that starts tonight. It features close-up footage of the animal rescue and rehabilitation process of Fun for Animals and Project Wildlife, two local wildlife rescue centers. Here's a peek. We'll meet some locals you might have already seen around. They've gotten off track, or maybe they've been blown off course. But with the help of a few dedicated people, they're getting a second chance with a different kind of R&R. Joining me are Animal R&R's filmmaker and director, Elliot Kennerson, and Beth Ugaretz, executive director of Project Wildlife. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Elliot, your film follows both uh, urban and also some rural wildlife animals from diagnosis through the rehabilitation process and release. Uh, why did you want to film that whole process? Well, I think that San Diego is a particularly interesting place to look at that process because there's such close proximity um, between urban areas, areas where people live, and areas that are still in many ways untouched by people and where the wildlife lives. And Beth, when we're talking about wildlife animals, which kind of animals do you type, uh, typically see? Uh, we've dealt with about 320 species altogether. Uh, San Diego is a very biodiverse area, so we see um, birds from hummingbirds all the way to the largest raptors and seabirds, and we see mammals that you might see in your backyard uh, possums, skunks, uh, squirrels, bats, uh, all sorts of different kinds of animals. And in, in the animals in this in this film, in the animals you're talking about, they tip they, they can look so adorable. I see some in my yard, <laughs> and yeah. we also might see them around our homes. But they are still wild animals. What should someone do if they come across a wildlife uh, uh, or an animal that that may be sick or hurt and they want to get it to you? Yeah, uh, I think the the key is, you're correct, is to remember that it is a wild animal. Even if it looks adorable and it is, looks injured or ill, uh, they can be defensive when, uh, when because they They're are afraid sick. of humans. Right. That is their natural fear. So approach cautiously. Uh, use something, if you're, if you're wanting to bring it in for, to our triage center, bring something, wear some gloves, Put a towel or something around the animal to protect yourself and put it in a box uh, and bring it A carrier, bring it don't in. try a to carrier. just carry a possum right. in, in your hand, something like that. Um, there's a skunk in the film, Elliot. I watched this uh, adorable skunk and he even actually at one point sniffs the camera. Um, <laughs> what kind of challenges did you face in filming uh, these animals? Well, since we were following what's essentially a natural process and a biological process, this process of recovery, um, kind of just keeping up with those stories was the challenge because, um, you know, it's, it, it's things that happen in nature don't always just kind of fit into a comfortable sort of story box and you can't always plan as much as you like. So, so yeah, keeping in contact with, with the folks inside Project Wildlife, going into film and just doing that for an uh, extended period of time was probably the biggest challenge. And we also saw in the film, Beth, a lot of the uh, staff and volunteers there. Yes. Uh, who are they and what kind of training do you need to work uh, in, in a center like yours? We have a very small staff uh, and, and we have a very large volunteer base, about 600 volunteers. Uh, we provide fairly extensive training for our volunteers because we are asking them to work with wild animals in a medical setting. And so it's, it's not for everyone. It can be very chaotic. Uh, decisions need to be made, just like in an ER for humans. It's a triage center, so decisions need to be made on, on the fly sometimes. And so certain people are attracted to that kind of uh, environment. And uh, ultimately, you release many animals. How, where do you yes. release them? Uh, we are required to release them within a rate, uh, perimeter of about three miles from where they were found so that we maintain stable populations and don't overcrowd another area. And, and Elliot, what would you like audience uh, members to take away from uh, watching your documentary? Uh, I guess I'd like them to understand that um, there's sort of an element of wild nature that's all around you, kind of no matter what type of setting you live in, if you live in an urban place or a rural one or something in between. And just when you have the opportunity and when, when when the need arises to kind of exercise your compassion for that nature and kind of do the right thing and help out animals if they need it. And now we know how to do it uh, safely. So Elliot Kennerson and Beth uh, Ugaritz, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.